Hey, it's your pal, Palimation, and wow, just wow. My dream ever since I first saw Solid Snake in Super Smash Bros. Brawl is finally a reality. Sora, my most wanted Smash character ever, is finally here. After a few days of non-stop climaxing, I'm finally able to compose myself and make a proper video on the topic. As my most wanted character for so long, I naturally daydreamed about what costumes, songs, stage, etc. I would like to see for Sora. I even made a list a while back that I planned to use in a video, but never got around to it. Until now. Now before I go through this list, I just want to make a quick disclaimer. This is not a complaint video. I am more than happy with all the choices Sakurai and the team made when it comes to Sora. For the most part anyway, but we'll get to that in a bit. I'm not saying my list is a superior one. In fact, I like a lot of Sakurai's choices more than my own. I just thought it'd be fun to compare our choices and see how differently things would have been if I was in charge. <laughs> To start things off, I'm just going to state the things that Sakurai and I were relatively the same on. The first being Sora's moveset. Now, I never made a concrete moveset for Sora on paper, but I did have a rough imagining of how he would fight, and it's nearly identical to how he actually fights in Smash. The only move I would have implemented that I didn't see is Strike Raid, or the Keyblade Toss if you're not familiar with the names. Funny enough though, Mario performed it. Also, seeing Mario wield the Keyblade had me creaming. The spirits I would have chosen all match up with Sakurai's choices as well, though I would have used the KH3 designs for Kairi and Riku, but minor details. Now let's get into what I would have done different. My choices for Sora's main outfits and its variations differ quite a bit from Sakurai's. My Player 1 outfit would have been Sora's Kingdom Hearts 3 design, as it's his most recent and my personal favorite. Player 2 would be Sora's KH2 outfit, which has the older hairstyle as well. For Player 3, we have the Guardian form from Kingdom Hearts 3. Player 4 is KH2's Valor form. Player 5 would be KH3's version of the Ultimate form. And Player 6, I have KH2's Wisdom form. Player 7 is the ever-popular Ante form, going with the KH3 version since it uses a Keyblade. And the final alt for Player 8 would be KH2 Sora wearing the ill-fitting Classic outfit, as a fun callback to the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 2 and Classic Sora in general. Now how do I think these compare to Sakurai's choices? Honestly, I like them pretty evenly. I like that Sakurai chose to include all of Sora's main designs, and the Steamboat Willy design is just incredibly charming. I am sad that the Anti form didn't make the list however, and I do prefer Sora's older appearance to his younger self, but I'll admit I really dig how the Smash model looks, as it almost looks like an in-between of the older and younger Sora, with the face not looking quite as pudgy as the old PS2 model. All in all, I think the Smash team did an amazing job with these outfits, and I think the younger Sora is honestly a better fit for the game. Next up we have the stage. So funnily enough, Dive to the Heart is actually the first stage that comes to mind for me, but I figured the abundance of Disney characters in the scenery would make this stage impossible. Boy was I proven wrong. So what did I go with instead? A fan favorite, Destiny Islands. I would have this stage work as a transforming stage. You start out on a normal island, then night falls and Heartless begin to swarm in the background. Soon the island begins falling apart as a giant orb of darkness begins ripping up the land. Complete darkness engulfs the stage until light returns and the island now resembles the end of the world appearance, with Darkseid rising from the crater in the background. Darkseid punches the ground and the island begins to crumble away until nothing but the sand remains. Particles of light then surround the arena and begin to reform the island, just like in the ending of the original Kingdom Hearts, thus starting the loop all over again. So how do I think this idea holds up to Sakurai's choice of Hollow Bastion? Personally, I feel like Destiny Islands is the more iconic choice, and I think the ideas I laid out would be quite the spectacle. But Hollow Bastion is still an amazing location, and I'll give it to Sakurai that's a little more unique since we already have some tropical stages in Smash. Though I would have liked to see creatures like the Heartless make some background appearances. All in all, both choices are iconic and well-beloved locations in the Kingdom Hearts series, though extra points go to Sakurai for not only including Dive to the Heart, but having the main cast of original characters all make cameos. <laughs> The last topic I will be covering here is the songs I would choose from the Kingdom Hearts series. I will be picking the top 10 songs from my personal list to match up with Sakurai's 10 picks. And yes, that's including the Dearly Beloved song you get from having the Melody of Memory game. Speaking of Dearly Beloved, the Kingdom Hearts 3 version will be my first pick, followed by the orchestral versions of Simple and Clean, Sanctuary, and Face My Fears. The fifth song is Bustin' Up the Beach to go with my Destiny Island stage, followed by Night of Fate. 
Estadi will be next, then we have The Other Promise slash Vector to the Heavens, a mashup song from Kingdom Hearts 3. Oskirta de Xehanort, which I'm just hoping I pronounce right, a song from Kingdom Hearts 3 that's a mashup of the final battle themes from Kingdom Hearts 1, Kingdom Hearts 2, and Dream Drop Distance will be the ninth song. Then the final song will be Dark Domination, the Master Xehanort theme from the Remind DLC. I'll admit the music is the one area I'm slightly disappointed in Sakurai's picks. Not that I dislike any of the songs, it's just that they all stem from the original Kingdom Hearts only. Which saddens me as Cage 2 and 3 have some of the best music in the whole series. Kingdom Hearts 3 especially since many of the songs are actually remixed mashups, essentially giving us multiple songs in one. But for all I know Sakurai's hands could have been tied and maybe they only allowed him to pick Cage 1 tracks. I also can't fault him for not getting the orchestral versions to any of the intro songs. I figure from the get go the vocal versions would cost way too much and Yutada Hikaru likely owns some rights to the songs. So my bet is even the orchestral versions are a legal and expensive nightmare. Still, all the best tracks from Kingdom Hearts 1 are there, but having some tracks from Kingdom Hearts 2 and 3 would have been nice too. So that's my list of all the ways I would have represented Sora and the Kingdom Hearts series in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. While it's a little sad to not see some of my fan favorite outfits and tracks, I am still incredibly thankful for all Sakurai has done, and his team did an absolutely stellar job at representing this character. Sora is one of my favorite characters of all time, and I hold the Kingdom Hearts series very close to my heart. I even put hundreds of hours into the mobile game, so you know I'm a huge fan. Also, I just want to gush real quick about how incredible it is to see Mario and Sora shaking hands. Fun fact, Mario is the entire reason Sora exists. Developers at Square discussed how they wanted to create a game fully exploring 3D space like Mario 64, but lamented that only Disney characters could rival Mario's popularity. A chance encounter with a Disney executive later, and Kingdom Hearts was born. So with Square and Disney being like Sora's mom and dad, Mario is the equivalent of the friend that convinced them to bang. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'd love to hear what your own list would look like. Please like, subscribe, follow my other social media, and all that jazz. Until next time, it's been real, it's been fun, it's been real fun. Have a good one.